Viruses are tiny and simple. They are as common as colds, and some are as deadly as AIDS. They give color to tulips and change human history. Diseases caused by viruses are as potent a force in our past as war and natural disaster. Smallpox was first reported 3,000 years ago, and it plagued us until 1978. There are seven different kinds of herpes known, and you've probably had the one commonly known as chickenpox. Every cold you get is from a virus, and there are hundreds of them. You may play host to 50 or more in your lifetime. Viruses are invisible to the human eye, and even optical microscopes magnifying objects 2,000 times couldn't find them. In the 1930s, German scientists finally identified them with an electron microscope, magnified 7,000 times. Deadly, universal, and small, viruses are harmless, even lifeless, outside a host cell. In order to reproduce, a virus must hook on to a living cell and push its own genetic material through the cell's membrane. Once inside, it uses the cell's natural processes to make more viruses. Viruses are highly selective. Rabies targets the brain. Cold viruses go for cells lining the nose and the sinuses. Mumps head for the salivary glands. And hepatitis reproduces only in the liver. A virus's success over time depends on its ability to adapt to changing environments. DNA viruses, like smallpox, change slowly, if at all. RNA viruses, like influenza and HIV, change quickly, making them much harder to stop. The word vaccine originated with the name of a cow disease called vaccinia. What's the connection? In the 18th century, an English physician, Edward Jenner, noticed that a surprising number of dairy farm workers caught a mild measles-like cow disease, known commonly as cowpox, and scientifically as vaccinia. These same milkmaids seem strangely immune to a similar but more deadly human virus called smallpox. On a hunch, Jenner extracted the cowpox virus from infected girls and injected it into his own infant son. More daringly, he then injected the boy with potentially fatal smallpox. The world's first vaccine worked. The cowpox made the boy a little sick but it helped his body build up resistance to the disease and looked enough like smallpox that his body battled that as well. Here's how our immune system works. When a virus enters our body, proteins called antibodies rush to the virus, marking it for destruction. White blood cells move in and take the virus out. Once your body has seen a virus, it remembers what the infectious agent looks like and attacks if the virus ever enters the body again. Vaccines work well because they look like deadly viruses and help create immunity against the real thing. Vaccines have been able to reduce or eradicate a number of deadly illnesses, like measles, smallpox, and polio. 
In the early part of this century, polio, transmitted through water and food, killed thousands of people and crippled many more. In 1955, a young physician named Jonas Salk killed the polio virus with a chemical called formaldehyde and then created a vaccine with the dead virus. For the first time, people developed immunities without ever getting sick. Polio has been nearly wiped out around the globe. In the crowded modern world, ever-expanding populations are on the move. As we move into new areas, we provide viruses with an opportunity to move out. Scientists like Stephen Morse call their progress viral emergence. As people introduce themselves into environments that used to be inaccessible to human habitation and to human exploration, suddenly these viruses spring out and they spring out at us because we're putting ourselves there and we're putting ourselves in their path. Senor Augusto Cardoza Cereva is part of a team searching for emerging viruses. He sets himself up as bait. Here in the canopy of the Brazilian rainforest, Augusto encourages mosquitoes to come in for a meal. It's their last. Biting bugs are fast frozen in a jar of liquid nitrogen. Back at the Institut de Evandro Chagas, researchers thaw the bugs and examine them under microscopes. Even though the bugs are dead, viruses along for the ride survive and just need a new host to multiply. Researchers oblige. They smash bugs into a soup and inject the liquid into lab mice, the first indicators of any viruses the bugs brought with them. The Institute has isolated 30 strains of virus that cause disease in humans, including yellow fever. More ominously, researchers have isolated 40 viral strains no one has seen before, emerging viruses. We've not only provided emerging viruses with new highways, we've given them wheels too. Mountains of used tires are shipped from developing nations to the U.S. for recycling. Pools of water collect inside the tires and make perfect breeding ponds for mosquitoes. Asian tiger mosquitoes hitched rides to the US, Africa and South America on just such worn out tires. Some Asian tiger mosquitoes carry dengue fever, translation, break bone fever causing excruciating muscle and joint pain, and occasionally, death. We, we can always, you know, we have to consider that. Though the virus hasn't emerged in the U.S. yet, the mosquitoes are here and ready. Just another sign of progress. HIV, the virus causing AIDS, continues its relentless march around the globe. Worldwide, one in every 100 people between the ages of 15 and 49 is infected. 
The epidemic began to emerge in the 1970s in small African villages like Masaka in Uganda, where scientists believe the disease was transmitted from monkeys to man. Thirty years later in this part of Uganda, one in three people tests positive for the virus. In Masaka, there are funerals almost every day. This woman mourns her husband's death, but she too suffers from AIDS. The bumps on her back are symptoms of the disease. Almost half the children in the Masaka district are orphans. Worldwide, 8.2 million children have been orphaned by the disease. A global campaign to educate people about the transmission of HIV through sex and the exchange of contaminated needles has helped slow the spread of this virus in some countries. But an estimated 16,000 people are infected every day. There is no cure. HIV is a nightmare epidemic because people can carry it and transmit it for years without even knowing they are victims. Since AIDS has been in Uganda longer than anywhere else, villages like Masaka offer a glimpse of the future unless human behavior changes dramatically or a vaccine is found. This is the village market, a once thriving place. Today, more than half the store owners are dead from AIDS. From the remote forests of Africa, AIDS has reached out to Paris, London, New York, Miami, and LA. No city anywhere in the world remains immune to its impact. The AIDS virus is an RNA virus, capable of mutating quickly, making it difficult to stop. Recently, promising steps have been made in the effort to find a vaccine. But in the meantime, HIV marches on. We have an alert. Location. Time of alert is now. There's an army at work, protecting us from our smallest enemies. At Fort Detrick, Maryland, an Army Special Forces team is on 24-hour alert. USAMRED, short for U.S. Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Disease, are trained to do battle with emerging viruses like the deadly Ebola virus that first attacked in the Sudan and Zaire in 1976. A soldier brought down by an infectious and deadly virus, known or unknown, would find himself whisked inside an isolation stretcher like this one on his way to Maryland. An airtight capsule inside the C-1 cargo plane protects against contamination en route. Pressurized spacesuits allow medics to work on patients without danger. If the suit springs a leak, air rushes out instead of in preventing an attack by an airborne virus. Next, medics take disinfectant showers and move on to a room where the air is carefully filtered. If work in this hot suite seems routine, it isn't. Hot zones of deadly virus can erupt overnight anywhere in the world. It happened 30 miles from this facility in 1989. 
Reston, Virginia used to be home to a quarantine center for imported monkeys, like these macaques. Monkeys spent a month here before shipment around the country. In the fall of 1989, one shipment of monkeys fell violently ill. Their symptoms looked alarmingly like those suffered by people in two Ebola outbreaks in Zaire. Experts at USAMRED confirmed their worst fears. The monkeys had carried Ebola into the United States. The virus turned out to be a new strain, one deadly only to monkeys, not men. But USAMRED medics knew they'd narrowly missed a biological bullet. Their training keeps them ready for the next one.